Hi there, it's Ken here with UAV Coach. Welcome back to our series as we get a closer look at the new Autel drones. Today we'll be doing a head-to-head -head comparison of the Autel Evo Light Plus and the DJI Air 2S. We'll take these out in the field and we'll do some demonstrations, then I'll give you my honest opinion at the end. So let's get started. So let's start off with what they both have in common. Both drones have obstacle avoidance in the front and in the rear. The Air 2S does have a sensor on top as well. They both have 12 kilometer max transmission range. They both have a one inch CMOS sensor with 20 megapixel photos. They both do have HDR as well. And they both have a tracking feature. Some notable differences in these two drones are weight, where the Air 2S weighs about 595 grams and the Light Plus weighs about 835 grams. The price, the Air 2S is about $1,000 and the Light Plus is about $1,400. The Light Plus does have 6K video at 30 frames per second, whereas the Air 2S has 5.4K at 30 frames per second. The Light Plus does have adjustable aperture from 2.8 to f11 and the air 2s is fixed at 2.8 the flight times are also a little different the light plus claims about 40 minutes flight time and the air 2s is about 31 minutes flight time so now that we know some of the differences and the likenesses let's take them out and start demoing the controllers for each drone are similar in design the dji seems to be a little bit more balanced when it comes to hovering and drone controllability, uh, both drones were very similar in several tests. Uh, they, they hovered very well and, and were stable. Uh, the control sticks uh, are a little bit um, more sensitive, I'll say, on the um, Light Plus. The, the DJI seems to have a little bit more uh, kind of back pressure on the, on the control sticks, but, but both drones uh, perform very well in controllability. Both drones have obstacle avoidance in the front and the rear, and they both use the orange, yellow, red caution format. The Air 2S does have uh, sensors for upward obstacle avoidance as well. And the Light Plus senses obstacles much further away than the DJI. Now, if we take a look at the maximum signal transmission range or signal strength, I did a test where I flew both drones out as far as I could see them to keep them within visual line of sight, which was about a half a mile and both drones the signal was very strong and worked very well i saw no uh, lapses or or anything and and both worked out quite well all the way out to about a half a mile now if we take a look at the video quality the light plus uh, has 6k video at 30 frames per second and the air 2s is 5.4k at 30 frames per second you can also see the difference in the field of view where the Light Plus has 82 degrees and the Air 2S has 88 degrees field of view. Here we see the Light Plus uh, 4K video in HDR and the Air 2S in 5.4K. Here we have the Light Plus 6K versus the 4K HDR and on the bottom the 5.4K of the Air 2S. Now let's take a look at picture quality. Here you see the Light Plus standard versus Air 2S standard and the Light Plus HDR versus the Air 2S smart photos. Now we'll move into the dynamic tracking feature or the active track on the Air 2S. In these tests, I was looking to see how well the drone locked on and would stay locked on. As I was walking around and I did some running, I did some maneuvers and I ran away from the drone, ran toward the drone. They both performed very well here and they were similar in how they were able to keep tracking. Uh, 
I also wanted to take a look at the Quick Shots features, two in particular. One would be the Orbit on the Light Plus and the Circle on the Air 2S. In this case, you can see before, like what's happened before on the Autel drones, where the drone just loses the target right at the beginning of the maneuver. As soon as the drone starts out, it kind of moves off the target and then it tries to get back on track. The other quick shot that I wanted to try was the flick on the Light Plus and the boomerang on the Air 2S. Again, you can see right at the beginning, the Light Plus loses track of the object and tries to get back on track, but it just doesn't keep locked on very well. The last thing I wanted to test was return to home and battery life. I flew these drones until they triggered the automatic return to home, but I wouldn't allow them to land, but I wouldn't allow them to land until the battery went completely dead. The Air 2S has a, a fail safe where the drone finally overtakes my controls and it lands the drone whereas the Light Plus didn't and it stayed in the air until it actually just fell out of the air. All right, well that's it. We've completed our demonstration of the Autel Evo Light Plus and the DJI Air 2S. Now some notable items are the controllers are a little different. I actually prefer the controller for the DJI Air 2S. The uh, Evo Light Plus is, is comfortable, but with the phone on there, it tends to be a little nose heavy. As far as hovering and controllability, they were both pretty similar. Obstacle avoidance is interesting. The Evo Light uh, obstacle avoidance is, is almost annoying. It, it senses objects really far away and it it's, has a lot of noise, has a lot of beeps. Um, as far as the safety uh, factor, I guess it's safer, but it, it was a, kind of annoying to me as opposed to the Air 2S. Transmission range uh, was good on both. I did a test as far as I could see both drones away to keep them in visual line of sight, and the uh, transmission signal was, was just great. As far as video goes, as you know, the Evo Light has 6K at 30 frames per second and the Air 2S has 5.4K at 30 frames per second. As far as those two items specifically, I don't know if there's a huge difference, especially for the type of people that I believe will be using these drones. They're now more in the prosumer range. So I'm thinking uh, people doing real estate, uh, potentially some cinematic type of jobs like weddings or various things like that. And in those cases, currently 4K is, is kind of the industry standard. Once you start to get into Hollywood type productions, then you need more uh, resolution. But as far as people using these drones, I, I think they're both similar and uh, not, not big differences in that. The Evo Light Plus does have um, adjustable aperture which is nice, but I found that the interface a little clunky. It wasn't uh, super easy to use, but it is nice to have that feature. With the Air 2S, you need to have ND filters in order to keep your, your shutter speed correct. As far as photo quality and photos go, they, they both were very similar. Uh, you have the 20 megapixel pictures and they both look good. I think the Evo Light Plus has a little bit um, clearer pictures, a little bit uh, more detail. I like the pictures and the video quality truly on the Evo Light Plus just a little bit better. I didn't cover the zoom features because frankly, I, I don't personally like trying to do zoom with the drones. If you need to zoom in on a photo or a video, I think it's better to do it in post-processing. Uh, the zoom quality is just not great on these and I just don't personally see the need for those generally speaking. Now one advantage I think 
is, is really in the HDR functionality. The Evolite Plus and the Nano Plus both, the Autel drones, the HDR features are, are actually very good. And for someone trying to just get uh, good pictures, good photos, good video, the HDR capability works well. And I think it's just a really uh, nice feature on these. The Air 2S has um, HDR in the smart photos functionality only. And in that sense, that works good as well. But I just like how the Evo Light Plus works a little bit better. Tracking works good on both. I did some crazy running around and, and trying to trick these two and they both did very well. I, the Air 2S lost it at one point when I was really running at it aggressively. But other than that, the both, they're both very good. Now, intelligent flight modes, DJI has it nailed down. They just, the, the lock on target is just better on the DJI uh, drones. I've tested several now and the Autel drones, for whatever reason, they lose the target at the beginning and then it's constantly trying to get back to it after that. I think it just works a lot better on the DJI drones. Now, flight times, the Evo light wins out, period. The, I, as you saw, I tested the <laughs> Evo light plus till complete failure, complete uh, uh, battery shutdown. Um, I don't recommend that. And honestly, I don't like that. The fact that the drone went all the way to zero and fell out of the sky. That is not a good thing in my opinion. As you saw the Air 2S, once it gets to a certain point, the drone just lands, period. It doesn't allow it to fall out of the sky. With the Evo Light Plus, I was able to keep it up, keep it up in the air and keep it going until it just completely quit. Um, I don't like that feature. Now, the, the times though, like I said, the Evo Light Plus came in at, at between 36 and 38 minutes, if I recall and the Air 2S was 24 to 27 minutes. So the batteries are definitely longer on the Evo Light Plus. That's an advantage for this drone for sure. The return to home function works very similar on both these drones. Uh, as far as accuracy on landing, I, I don't know what to think now. I went back and forth on the Autel drones. First thought they were bad, then they were spot on, especially with the Nano Plus and uh, my testing now went all over the place. It was about to land on top of the camera and, and various things. It tries to adjust, it does have, once it switches to the accurate landing mode, it adjusts pretty well, but it's just kind of all over the place. And the DJI Air 2S, it's good, it, it's pretty consistent, but it's not always right on point. So again, Keep your thumb on the flight pause button in any automated flight modes and, and especially when you're landing in return to home. The last thing I'll mention is the gimbal alignment at startup. The Evo Light Plus just doesn't work well in my opinion. The camera is too close to the ground. It, it's a design flaw in my opinion. I cannot start this up on a landing pad whether it's on grass or if it's on dirt in a baseball field, the camera hits the landing pad and it won't allow it to align. So that's a big problem for me. If you're holding it up, if it's on a firm surface, it's fine, it works. If you're holding it in your hand, it works. But just the fact that starting it up on any other surface than just a hard, flat surface, it doesn't work. And I didn't want to start it up on a sort of a gravelly field because you'll get rocks and everything everywhere else. So that really is a negative in my mind. They need to fix that clearance of the camera to the ground. So that's it for this video and this series on the Autel drones. I hope you find these things helpful and if you're considering drones that maybe you can use some of this information, I would love to hear what other people feel and thoughts that you have and other comments. So please leave comments below. I will be doing another video very soon now that I've just received my 
production version of the DJI Mini 3 Pro. I'll be doing a video on that one soon. So don't forget to subscribe to the UAV Coach channel. And from all of us here at UAV Coach, we wish you blue skies and safe flying. We'll see you soon.